Well, good morning, good morning from Boston, Massachusetts. It's Jennifer here, and I'm hoping that you can all hear me and see me well. <laughs> Some of you were here early. I thank you for your enthusiasm. I just wanted to make sure that everything was working on the receiving end. That's why it was quiet for a while. But thank you guys for your patience. And here I am. We're starting our Christmas Eve live. For some of you, it already is the evening. For me, it's still morning time. So the day, um, there's still many hours in the day for me. But it's a special day. It's Christmas Eve, the day before Christmas. Whether you celebrate um, this holiday or not, it is a holiday season. We're all approaching the end of the year. And so it's a special time, a holiday season for all of us as we say goodbye to 2020 and welcome 2021. Um, some of you have been here for a while waiting patiently. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I see Diego is here and Richard Verbal Kalp. Hello to you guys. Jean-Claude was also here earlier. And is it Damlanin? Hello to you. I'm doing well and I'm glad that you're here too. Misba and Vaithi Mohammed came early. Thank you guys for showing up and joining me. Um, Shak, Sir, Fam Ho, of course you're here, and thank you for being here so late at night. <laughs> Farin, Merry Christmas to you. Stunning Lad is here. I think what's happening is you typed a message and it appeared multiple times, so I deleted the, re uh, the duplicates and left the original. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Damadar, Merry Christmas to you. Okay. <laughs> I see all your comments. Wayne, Layla, Arushi, Amar, hello. No, I'm still in Massachusetts. My home state is Pennsylvania, but I'm in Massachusetts right now. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Thank you all for being here. Rashidal Islam from Bangladesh, I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> well, guys, we have a special... Um, activity ahead of us. We're going to read the traditional poem for Christmas, which is Twas the Night Before Christmas. I'll tell you more about it in a moment. But I do want to take this opportunity to share some very special announcements. I'm very excited to tell you things that I have planned. Um, so let me see if I can share my screen. I should be able to do that without any difficulty. Let's try that. <laughs> see if you can see what I'm seeing. And I'll wait. As you can tell, I have multiple devices open always to make sure that what I'm seeing is what you're seeing. So I have my phone. <laughs> I have my laptop. Twas. Oh, good question. We're going to go through the poem. And um, if you guys want me to read it twice, I will. But the first reading, um, I'd like to take the time to explain unfamiliar words, unfamiliar structures. And then if you'd like, um, I'd be happy to read it a second time all the way through without interruption. Twas is an old fashioned abbreviation for it was. Some of you looked ahead and saw the poem that I'm reading, and it's called Twas the Night Before Christmas. Twas is an abbreviation. An a contraction, I should say, a contraction that we don't use in everyday English anymore, but um, it, it's a contraction. The full form, it was. <laughs> Stunning lad also can help explain. Okay, looks like everything is fine. You guys can see my screen. Alessia is here too. Good evening to you. So it is Christmas Eve, December 24th, and thank you guys for being here. I want to remind you, not only am I on YouTube posting videos or live streams on Thursdays, I'm also on Instagram. So if you want to have more content from me, free content from me, be sure to follow me on Instagram. It's English with Jennifer Lebedev, and I post short clips, one minute or less every Monday. And those clips usually target listening, speaking pronunciation. So check them out, okay? All right. So the first thing I want to do is say thank you. Some of my members are here already with their special badges. Um, I do have 
currently three levels of membership. I have a lot at the basic level, and those basic memberships are also very important to me. All the memberships help support my channel, and I thank all of you members for choosing to study with me this way. But I give a special thanks to my super and truly marvelous members. Those are the two higher levels. Some of you guys have been with me for months, and a few of you even for years, and I thank you for that decision to stay with me and support me as I support you in your studies. You support me in my efforts to continue this channel. So thank you to all of you. Um, if you have not considered memberships, please do. If you see the blue button saying join, click it and find out what I can offer you. I try to make that 99 cents level the best dollar you've ever spent. I really want to give you the most I can um, at that basic level. So please consider um, basic membership. It's only 99 cents a month. And I really try to give you incredible value for $1. Um, every Two, well, two times a week, guys, I'm sharing language tasks, usually connected to videos that I've shared in the past. And these tasks usually target grammar, vocabulary, and writing. And um, if you do the math two times a week, the you know every month has four weeks at least, you're getting at least eight short tasks um, a month for a dollar. And I correct them. Some of those tasks invite you to write sentences or to paraphrase, and I correct. Whoever posts gets my corrections. So I imagine for one dollar, you get eight opportunities to practice um, tasks, okay, with me, with my guidance. But again, and if it's not available, Thunder, I know I have special news for people like you, Thunder, so hold on. <laughs> um, other things that I want to share, this is an exciting perk, is I finally went back and took my old live streams from a time when I was giving live streams to sponsors who became members, and I've now created a playlist. It's an archive of my old live streams for members. Um, so there are 27 of them, and if you again do the math, each live stream is at least 30 minutes. Some go around 40 minutes, there's even a few around an hour. I basically did the math and realized I'm giving over 13 hours of instruction, again for one dollar. If you become a basic member, you get the tasks two times a week and you get access to these live streams. That's over 13 hours of instruction. Um, but if that's not enough to encourage you to click the join button, then I have a super exciting perk. I'm so excited. I think this is really wonderful. We live in such a creative world. So Emojam reached out to me with an exciting offer. This is a new way of learning and using your conversational or using my conversational expressions that I can give to you in your daily communication. Emojam, they say they have the future of emojis and I agree. These are gifts with audio, <laughs> GIFs with audio. So not just like a static sticker, my stickers with my audio, my voice. So you can download the Emojam app and then find the YouTube tab and you'll see my audio GIFs under, under Jennifer ESL. So you can use my audio GIFs in chat apps. This is for iOS and Android. You can use them on iMessage, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, um, things like that. So I'm giving one free gift to everyone so you can try it. And then I have bonus gifts for my YouTube members. Again, the best spent dollar ever, right? If you like these, please let me know. If more people download them, even the free one, I need to know that you like it, that um, you find it useful. I would be so happy to create more. Imagine this is a way to use conversational expressions on a more frequent basis. Uh, more frequently, let's say, so that you hear my voice, you hear the way I say these expressions, you can mimic um, my intonation, my rhythm, and these expressions will become more familiar to you. Things like, talk to you later, sorry, my bad. Okay, so again, what you do is you go to the Emojam app and download it. All of you will get one free gift today if you want to try it out. And I have an iPhone, so I just wanted to show you what I did to get these gifts. I went to Emojam, I downloaded it, then you open the app, and you'll get access to stickers. My, or, Well, <laughs> the future of stickers. My audio gifts are under YouTube, 
and currently I have one free one for everyone and then two bonus gifts for my members. Again, if I see interest, I will happily create more of these audio gifts for you. I think it could be really fun. <laughs> You're downloading it now. It Talk is Talk to you later. There's my voice. Talk to you later. <laughs> So imagine, um, the more you hear these, the more familiar they will become, and you can use them just in daily conversation yourself, not just in the chat apps, but it's a fun way to include natural ways of expressing common things, right? Like talk to you later rather than bye. <laughs> so I'm going to give you um, a sneak peek at the three that I have. Sorry, my bad. Talk to you later. <laughs> Yeah, sure thing. Yay. <laughs> so I worked with an artist who was able to make my audio gifts look like me. And then we put my audio with um, the, the animation. And that's what we came up with for you. So you can download the Emojium app. There's the link. Um, and then what we can do is um, add to it. If you find it not just fun, and, but useful and, and helpful, I would love to build this collection for you guys. Okay? <laughs> I'm glad some of you are already checking it out. Yes, thank you. I will share the link um, in the video description um, after I post this. But um, again, just the download app, it's there. If you just go to the App Store or Google Play, find Emojam. And then um, once you're there, you can open up and find that YouTube tab and you'll see me listed under Jennifer ESL. Okay, super fun. I think this is very creative, not just a gimmick, but a really fun way to include natural expressions in your daily communication. Super cute. Yeah, <laughs> it was fun seeing someone, an artist, draw a, a, an animated GIF with your face on it. <laughs> it was a fun process. Sorry. Okay. The other exciting news I want to tell you coming up is that in January, I am going to go on Patreon. You probably know that a lot of YouTubers um, have been trying this out, and I would like to try this out as well because I do realize that the YouTube membership program is not available um, in all countries and all regions, um, as Thunder had said, and that makes me sad that you haven't been able to um, take advantage of the things that I am able to create for members. So I would like to keep my basic membership on YouTube and transition the higher levels over. Um, so if you are an existing member, don't worry, it's not going away. I'm just um, transitioning it over to Patreon with um, some modifications, all for the better. So look for the new button to join me there. It will be on my channel. You can click and find out information about what I am offering on Patreon. Um, for existing members, don't worry, I'll give announcements so everything will be clear. But good things are waiting for all of us in January 2021 um, with the Emojam app, um, the archive live stream, still here on YouTube, and then perks going on Patreon that will be accessible for all of you, I sure hope. Um, Patreon has been more accessible for people around the world, and I hope that will be true for all of you so that you can join me in this special way. Um, I would love to extend learning beyond YouTube, beyond Instagram, beyond the, the weekly lessons that I share with you, and give you additional forms of studying with me, different forms of instruction. Okay, there will be different levels and I'll tell you all the information. But again, remember the basic level here on YouTube is 99 cents and I truly want to give the best value I can, the best dollar you'll ever spend. If you can't join the program, then wait for my announcements, look for the button and check out Patreon in January, probably around mid-January is when I'll be ready. Okay, all right, so those are all my exciting announcements. I've been working hard to create new learning opportunities for all of you. And what I'd like to do now is share the holiday poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas with you. Some of you might have heard this before. I did read it in the past, but um, it's a holiday tradition. There are families that choose to read this every year. And so I feel that even if you've heard it before, it is appropriate to hear it again because it is Christmas Eve today. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a sip of my tea as we get into the poem. Now, Clement Clark Moore, you can see he lived a long time ago. This um, poem was written 
I think in the early 1800s. So we're talking about something that was written about 200 years ago, but it's become a holiday classic. Um, there are different versions of it. Some of the versions have updated l the language into more modern English. The version that we have is still somewhat older. Um, so I will help you understand it, but I still think um, overall it, it, you will understand in general, even with some of the old-fashioned language in place. Um, it's a beautiful poem. Apparently he wrote it for his children and he read it on um, Christmas Eve. Uh, he was such a, an excited dad who wrote the poem and then came home and read it for his children. It was like a Christmas present for them. I think that's very special. Okay. All right, guys, so as I said, let's read through it and I'll explain. Also try to keep track of questions. So if I miss anything and didn't explain anything or I didn't explain anything clear enough, then let me know. And then um, if there's time, if you'd like to stick around, perhaps we can even do a second reading um, from beginning to end. You can come back later, watch the recording and listen. You could do listen repeat practice or you could even read along with me, okay? Goodness, it's a long, beautiful poem. I'm going to take another sip of tea. <laughs> okay, twas the night before Christmas. <laughs> twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. Okay. Someone already asked about this contraction, twas, old-fashioned, we don't use it in everyday English right now, it was, it was the night before Christmas, twas the night before Christmas. Not a creature was stirring, not stirring like stirring soup or stirring your um, sugar into coffee, but stirring as in moving, it's another meaning of the verb stir. So everyone was asleep, all was quiet and still. Not a single creature was moving, right? The stockings were hung by the chimney. There are the stockings, right? They look like oversized socks. I explained some of this vocabulary in a recent bonus video for members. They were hung by the chimney with care. Don't forget that irregular verb, right? Hang something, hung. In the hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. If you follow me on Instagram, I explained who St. Nick is. St. Nick is short for St. Nicholas. It's another name we have for Santa Claus. If you'd like to know exactly who St. Nicholas was, be sure to go over to Instagram and you'll watch my one minute clip and I explain that, okay? The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. Right? It's nighttime. They're ready to sleep. Settled our brains, settled our minds. You know, when you settle anything, you calm it down. It becomes quiet. So it's time to sleep with a quiet mind and have a good night's rest. Um, back when this was written, they had only fires in their homes in the fireplace to keep them warm, right? Um, they didn't have heat in their homes, so the rooms were cold, and they would have nightcaps. They'd put a, a cap or a kerchief, something to cover their heads, because it was cold in the room. So Mama put um, like a wrap around her head, and he had a cap to keep his head warm, because it was so cold. Sugar plums, right? Just candy. So the kids had happy thoughts inside their head of all the candy that they would get the next day. And they were nestled all snug in their beds. Think of birds in a nest. Um, when you're nestled in there, you're inside and you're comfortable and you're protected. Snug, same thing. It's this concept of being um, wrapped up, protected, and covered. So everybody is in their beds. It's Christmas Eve, asleep, comfortable, and warm. A picture that night, right? Everything's quiet and warm and comfortable. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. <laughs> Who knows what lawn is? Out on the lawn. Does anyone know lawn? One way we could talk 
about the property around a house, the lawn, right? Out on the lawn, there arose such a clatter. Well, we know that um, St. Nicholas, Santa Claus is coming. Where would he might, where might he arrive? The lawn is the grassy area around the house, the front lawn, for example. You have a front yard and a backyard, and the yard is generally covered with grass. People cut their grass, they mow their lawn. Mow the lawn, it's referring to the grassy area. The clatter is all the noise, lots of sounds. I sprang from the bed because he heard all this noise. He jumped up, sprang, sprang, past tense. He sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, he flew like a flash, quickly, right? Flash. Tore open the shutters, those things that cover the windows, those boards. Often today, shutters are just for decoration, but in olden times, the shutters were used to close the window, to cover them and protect them from stormy, stormy weather. Yes. Okay. And the sash, um, the sashes, I guess, that the ties that would hold the curtains back. Um, so you have curtains on the inside, shutters on the outside. So he was all asleep, everyone snug in their beds, but he heard all this noise out on the lawn, on the grass in front of his home. And he jumped up and he went to the window, opened the shutters um, to see what is out there. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When, what to my wondering eye should appear, but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. Okay, miniature, I think you know, mini, small, tiny, right? Let's go back up to this first line, on the breast of the new fallen snow. I picture, um, you know, if you are lucky enough to live in the, the cold climates after a fresh snowfall you look out before anyone has walked there before any animals have gone across it's like a blanket of snow and if there are hills it looks all nice and rounded like a breast of the new fallen snow and you could see the moon shining off that snow um, it's a beautiful beautiful sight luster is shine so a picture of fresh snow on um, the hills on the on the ground and the moon is shining off of that snow um, but more important is that he sees this small sleigh and eight tiny reindeer, right? That's how Santa gets around in his sleigh, and the sleigh is pulled by reindeer. <laughs> in the Emojam app, Ashwawa, if you're still multitasking, um, just look for the YouTube tab and you'll see me as Jennifer ESL, okay? If anyone's to, anyone wants to challenge themselves as I'm reading along, um, you might think, how many of those eight names do you know? <laughs> there are names for the reindeer that pull Santa's sleigh. If you want to challenge yourselves, yes, you're allowed to Google if you want to multitask, but you can type eight names of Santa's reindeer. See how many you can come up with. All right. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Okay, of course he's the driver. He's driving the sleigh. Lively, energetic, and quick. That's St. Nick. St. Nick, St. Nicholas, Santa Claus, Santa. We have different names for him. <laughs> rapid, fast. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came. So those who drove his course, the, the reindeer, were faster than eagles. And he called them all by name. I don't see any names yet, but you're going to see them soon. <laughs> you used to spell miniature incorrectly. <laughs> we often just say mini, right? Very small. You know Rudolph. Everyone should know Rudolph with the red... There are red-nosed reindeer. All right, here are the names. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. all right, he's driving the sleigh and he's calling out to them. These are the names, okay? To the top of the porch, 
porch can be a front porch or a back porch. Um, porch is generally that area right outside the door. It's usually covered, um, open, has some stairs leading up to the front door. Some porches are very big and wide. People can sit there in nice weather. If it's a covered porch, um, there's like a little roof. Um, Santa needs to go to the roof of a house. That's where he lands. That's where he lands. Okay. <laughs> All right, so he's flying, flying, as dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew, with the sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. Picture dry leaves, and when the wind blows, a strong wind, the leaves move around, right? Before the wild hurricane fly. So we're getting all kinds of images of how fast these reindeer can fly in the sky. Um, just like leaves can be carried up high, these reindeer can carry Santa's sleigh up high. Up to the housetop, the reindeer, those are the coursers. And so they're bringing him up to the roof of the house and the sleigh is full of toys. That's why St. Nicholas makes his trip. Santa Claus is delivering toys to boys and girls around the world. <laughs> and then in a twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. <laughs> okay. In a twinkling, just very fast, I heard on the roof prancing and pawing of each little hoof. The reindeer, like horses, have feet. We call them hooves. So one hoof, right? And as you hear the reindeer on the roof, you're hearing their footsteps, but they don't have feet, they have hooves. Um, so what you hear is prancing and pawing. You can imagine what it would sound like to hear eight reindeer on your roof. Right? And how does Santa traditionally get into the home? He goes down the chimney with a jump, with a bound, with a bound. <laughs> I see all the Christmas wishes coming in. Thank you guys very much. All right, let's go on. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. Right? What does he have? A pack, a sack. We usually say a sack of toys, a big bag. Um, traditionally, Santa is dressed in red and white and in fur. Maybe he wears faux fur now in 2020, but he has to dress warmly because he flies around in the winter, winter night, so it's cold. But as he goes down the chimney, he gets a little dirty. Tarnished is getting a little dirty, um, a no longer clean um, and pristine. He's covered with ashes and soot. That's the stuff left over from a fire. Um, so if Santa comes down a chimney, obviously he gets a little dirty with ashes and soot. He has this bundle, right, this sack of toys that he threw on his back. Fling, flung. That's another irregular verb. And it's on his back. Who did he look like? Like a peddler someone selling things. A peddler traditionally is someone who sells things out on the street, right? Yes. <laughs> his eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses. His nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow. And the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. Those of you who know um, all the choices we have as writers, we have the choices to make comparisons. Um, we have metaphors and similes. We have similes here because we're making comparisons with the words like and as, right? Um, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry, and his chin, the beard, was as white as the snow. Those are similes. Right? His eyes twinkled like stars, right? Nice and shiny dimples. People smile. They often have dimples in their cheeks. Droll little mouth. He's happy. Happy little mouth drawn up like a bow. Mm -hmm. okay. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth. 
and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. <laughs> Okay, so in the past, remember, this was written 200 years ago, and people had different feelings about smoking, pipes, cigars, etc. Um, I don't think in 2020 Santa smokes anymore, but back in the 1800s he did. <laughs> so he had a pipe, and the stump is like a short part, so he held the, um, the end of his pipe in his teeth, um, and then the smoke went around his head like a circle, like a wreath. Right, and Santa is traditionally a large guy with a big belly. Um, Mrs. Claus, she feeds him very well. Um, again, you know he has to stay warm on this long journey, so he eats well. <laughs> I'm sure he eats cookies, Christmas cookies too. So he has a big belly um, that shakes like a bowl full of jelly. <laughs> He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A, a wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. Again, references to his size, his big belly. Chubby, is a, it's a cute word for being a little, um, having some weight. It's, it's a cute word. Plump, we usually think of plump like plump cherries or a plump piece of fruit, like full, full of something, like in, in this case, full of juices. But um, <laughs> it, it's not a bad comparison. Oops, I want to go back. A right jolly old elf. Jolly is another word for happy. Um, in spite of myself. So you tried not to laugh, but he couldn't help laughing when he saw Santa. He was happy to see Santa, um, and uh, it made him happy, made him laugh. But um, Santa caught this man looking at him, and he gave him a wink, right? And he twisted his head, and he had nothing to dread, nothing to fear. Santa is just doing his job on Christmas Eve, um, and he caught the man spying on him, but it was no big deal. There's nothing to fear. Okay. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. Right. So after he's done delivering the presents, he puts the presents around the tree and in the stockings. It's time for him to go, and he leaves the same way he came, up the chimney. Right. Filled the stockings, and then I guess that's his magic signal <laughs> to say, "I'm ready to go." Up the chimney, up the chimney he goes. <laughs> It's putting you all in a holiday spirit. I see all of your holiday wishes coming in. Thank you so much. Red Star, Yamzen, Wafi, Leonelli. I see all the wishes. Thank you very much. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy, happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. We have some good irregular verbs in this poem, spring, sprang, like fling, flung, sprang, like he jumped into his sleigh and he gave a whistle, right, and he has a special way to whistle and make the reindeer start moving again, and they flew down, like um, thistles, like, uh, you know, like leaves, um, branches, they allow you to, I guess, like, like rain would slide down, um, branches or leaves uh, uh, of trees and plants, they go downward. It's all meant to be a very smooth um, process. So he's also just going very smoothly up and off the roof and flying away. Air, another old-fashioned word, before. Before he drove out of sight. What did he call out? Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night. The number of pages. It's remember this is a poem, so we don't talk about um, pages or paragraphs. These are stanzas. Um, you'll see the poem presented differently in books. Usually, um, each stanza gets a page, but they might break it up differently from publication to publication. I decided just to put one stanza on each slide. <laughs> All right, so quickly, let me tell you what words I think are worth remembering. Stir. The other meaning of stir is to move. Not a creature was stirring. Settle. Make something calm and quiet. 
right? They wanted to settle their brains, settle their minds for a long winter's nap. Lawn is the grassy area around a house, like the front lawn. Clatter, loud noises, like Santa and all of his reindeer landing on your roof would make a clatter. <laughs> Shutters, that's what covers your window. You might just have them for decoration, but in olden times, shutters were there for protection. Luster is a shine like the luster of the moon on the snow, on the ground. Okay. Okay. Hoof is the foot of a deer, horse, all right? Usually those kinds of animals with um, four legs, um, hoof. And like horses, mules, donkeys, goats, with a hoof. Ashes and soot, the remains of a fire, all the black stuff. Um, soot is on the walls of the chimney. Ashes is the powdery stuff that is um, like right, right on the floor of the chimney. Okay, But it's all the remains of the fire, all the black stuff. Fling, past tense, flung to throw. He flung the big bag, the big sack of toys on his back. A bundle of something is a way we group things together. A bundle of toys. Um, what else could we have a bundle of? Uh, a bundle of pencils, maybe, wrapped up with a rubber band. Stump is a short part of something, like, like, like a tree stump. But in the poem, um, Santa smokes a pipe, and he has the stump of his pipe between his teeth. Stump is a short part of something. Okay, it is a lovely poem. <laughs> Jerk could be a noun or a verb. It's a quick, hard pull. A quick, hard pull. Okay, I'm glancing every so often to make sure there are no um, questions about things that I've read. So let me go, whoops, I'm going to go back, 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 back. And those of you who'd like to stick around, um, let's go to the beginning. And it's always good to appreciate a poem without interruption. What I'd encourage you to do, if you're not ready, then just listen. And later, when the recording is available, play it back, and you can listen, pause after each slide, and do a listen-repeat, OK? I won't go too fast. It's not about reading fast. It's about reading smoothly and with expression. If you're ready, you can read along with me, OK? Let's take a sip of tea and get ready for this long poem, No Interruptions. And now this is a poem that some families will choose to read tonight to the children, okay? "'Twas the Night Before Christmas by Clement Clark Moore. "'Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house "'not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. "'The stockings were hung by the chimney with care "'in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below, when what to my wondering eye should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver, so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, Dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof, 
the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur, from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled! His dimples, how merry! His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Again, I'll show the words that are worth remembering. You can take notes or just review them later. Okay. Before we move on to a Q&A session that I have time for, I just want to remind you again about YouTube memberships, the best spent dollar you'll ever <laughs> experience, I hope, and the Emojam gifts, which is really exciting. Just go to Google Play or um, the App Store, download Emojam. The link is there. I'll put it in the video description later. And then, actually, I'll copy it. I'll do that in just a moment. Um, and you can find my audio gifts. Uh, there is one that all of you can use right now, today, in your chat apps. And then there are some bonus gifts for my members at all levels. And again, if you love them, if you find them useful, let me know and I'll do my best to create more for you. Um, coming in um, 2021, probably mid-January, I'm going to open Patreon perks. There'll be memberships over on Patreon. Um, I'm going to give exclusive YouTube live streams. I'll have Zoom Q&A sessions and bonus videos. So it's very exciting. Look out for announcements and look out for that new button on my channel. Okay. I will share announcements on the community tab. So a lot of exciting changes and um, exciting opportunities for us in the new year. Okay. All right, guys. So I'm going to look over here now to what is going on. And I think what I'm going to do for you guys, a couple things. The first thing I want to do is get this, whoops, let's see if I can get back to this app. Oops, oops, oops. <laughs> Maybe not, but I will put the link later. This is a time, guys, as I'm getting a link. I'd like you to um, consider questions that you have. I'll be looking at the chat before I end. Um, so if you have anything that you'd like to ask me, type it in the chat and I'll take a look and do my best to answer. Okay? Let me see if I can put this here. Um, so if you need the quick link, HG, whoops, HTTPS. I'm putting the link for you so it's a little easier, those who haven't found it yet. Emojam, Emojam, app, link, DL, that should do it, guys, okay? So, 
a fun perk that's already available for members of my channel is the Emoji app, but all of you can try the one, the one free audio gift right now today, so please check it out, okay? All right, so I am going to stick around for just um, a few more minutes and see if there are any questions. Stunning Lad is making a suggestion. You're saying, I did have um, movie reviews on Kiki. Oh, that's true. That's true. I have to think about what to do with those movie reviews. Maybe they will be a, a future perk on Patreon. <laughs> so, um, That's the other thing I do with my members. Um, I often turn to them for ideas and suggestions. Um, that was a suggestion from a member. Is could you more easily make um, those live streams, the old live streams, available and accessible? So I did, and they are now um, an uh, it's an archive that's available to all members of my channel. Okay. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I don't know what my plans are exactly for next week. I'm taking it almost day by day. Um, I may share a new video on Thursday. I don't know if I'll go live. That is New Year's Eve. So we have our Christmas Eve live. I'm not sure about a New Year's Eve live. I think that's um, a bigger holiday around the world. So I'm sure you'll be celebrating um, with family. Of course, they warn us not to have large gatherings this year. But no matter where you are and who you're celebrating with, I hope it's a happy event um, full of optimism for 2021. This has been a challenging year for all of us. Um, but I hope that the new year will bring us health and happiness um, and a lot of good things that um, we very much missed this year in 2020. <laughs> I don't teach, um, um, I'm not a test specialist, so I don't fo focus on test exams. I focus on general English. I have a belief that if you have a general strong foundation, that will help you no matter what your goals are. But there are test specialists who can help you familiarize yourself with the test exams. Um, I think that's the key, is having a strong foundation and then gaining familiarity with the test that you need to prepare for. Okay? Um, yes. Well, Merry Christmas to you all. <laughs> Let me scroll back and see if there's anything that I missed, guys. You can also type and tell me what are your plans for the for New Year's Eve. Is anyone doing anything kind of special? Do you have any suggestions for the rest of us? We all have to stay home. Um, but the question is, how will we celebrate it in a fun yet safe way? Or a safe yet fun way, we could say. I'll be home. I want to keep it simple and quiet, but I'll probably ask my children what their... Um, wishes are in terms of a special menu for New Year's Eve dinner and perhaps we'll create a special dinner and we'll put our favorite foods on the table. Some of you may have special um, meals, um, special dishes that you eat. I know some cultures eat long noodles for good luck, long, ludo long noodles uh, for a long life. Um, some noodles are on the table at New Year's Eve in some families. I think some um, cultures have a tradition about grapes. Didn't I read something about that? Grapes. <laughs> like how many grapes are you supposed to eat like at certain times? Oh yeah, there's all kinds of fun traditions around the world. Feel free to share what your traditions are. Um, if uh, I don't have VIP courses, but I said the, the membership program is what I'm going to focus on in January. So the... Um, the membership program through Patreon will have a couple of live streams a month and bonus videos. So if you're interested in a group learning experience, that's the um, the path that I encourage you to take is to visit me on Patreon, read about the memberships, and choose a level that is appropriate for you. Um, I do offer private instruction. Um, the number of students I have is limited for a reason, um, but if you're interested, that's always available through my website, EnglishWithJennifer.com. You will probably not see times immediately available because um, I give times to my regular students. I add them and then they're booked right away by my private students. Oh goodness, the, I got a super chat. Stunning lad, you are the most generous person. <laughs> You vote for a New Year's Eve live stream. Well, goodness, for 65 pounds, I'll have to consider that. <laughs> I, I do love punctuation. I don't know if that's everybody's... Um, <laughs> if that's everybody's desire on New Year's Eve to study punctuation. But what I could do is if you guys have a set of questions um, that I could 
compile in advance and then give answers to, I might be willing to do that on New Year's Eve. Um, so do I cook turkey for Christmas? Not always, but this year, yes, I found a cute little turkey and I decided to um, roast another turkey, not as big as Thanksgiving, but we're going to have turkey on Christmas Day tomorrow. Um, and then, of course, we still have some Christmas cookies left over. <laughs> Okay. Can you name the states you've gone to besides Pennsylvania? Oh boy. Um, not all 50 states, but a lot. I was, I'm very happy to say that my family made it to Hawaii for a, a short trip a couple of years ago. Um, some of you saw the live streams I created when I was traveling there. Um, South Dakota, and where else did we go then? Wisconsin. Did we go to? Yes. Um, a lot of the southern states. Um, something that I did after college and before graduate school is I had a, a little adventure, two adventures in the cruise line industry. And the first um, cruise ship took me down to the Bahamas. Um, and then the second one was a steamboat. And I sailed along the Mississippi River for a few months. And I got to see all the southern states close up. Um, so I got to see um, Louisiana, Mississippi, all the states along the Mississippi River, all the way up to Ohio, which I'd seen because I'm originally from Pennsylvania, but I got to see it from the, the river, from a river boat. That was exciting. Um, I've been briefly in California, but I'd like to see a lot of other states, Montana, Utah. I'd love to see Alaska one day. <laughs> All right, Rosarin, good night to you. Oh, Victor is asking about phrasal verbs. I have another exciting sort of um, secret which I will share with you is that I've been giving a lot of thought to phrasal verbs. I already have two playlists, two phrasal verb challenges on YouTube, but I have been thinking about giving more attention to phrasal verbs as early as January 2021. So if you also have interest in phrasal verbs like Victor, then please make sure you subscribe and follow me because um, I plan to give attention to phrasal verbs. I know it's, it's a um, desire of many learners. And um, again, if you are a member on Patreon next year, then perhaps some of our live streams can focus on reviewing those phrasal verbs that I cover in my public videos. So again, I always have my public videos that are free to everybody, but I look for ways to extend learning. I know a lot of you want the interaction, the feedback, and that's what I can give through live streams, okay? Um, my favorite book, I have a lot of favorite books, but actually I'll show you one. My private students, oh, do I have it here? I do, do all kinds of reading. And I have one student who um, appreciates fiction, as I do. We've already read a couple novels. I have some students who read um, fiction. Majority don't, but some do. And for my book lovers, um, I share books that I've read. And so more recently, one of my private students and I read this young adult no novel called Things Not Seen. Let me see if I can hold it up and you can see it. It's a young adult novel. I do recommend young adult novels. Um, Hunger Games, by the way, was originally, uh, it is, it's a trilogy, it's fiction, um, and it became the popular movie that we know today. Um, but Hunger Games is young adult. That's young adult fiction. Um, so it's a little more accessible, meaning easier to read, easier to understand than um, regular fiction. Um, but it's all, basically the main characters are always um, young adults. Uh, teenagers, but um, one of my private students and I just finished reading this book and we had a couple of lessons to discuss and she um, also did some recordings to summarize and react and some of her assignments were also to write some um, answers to discussion questions. That's just one of several examples of things that I do with private students, but um, yeah, that's the most recent novel that I read with a student, okay? Stunning Lad is having turkey. <laughs> Hopefully it's cheaper than 65 pounds. I thank you for your generous Christmas gift here, your super chat. Yes, phrasal verbs are very popular. Merry Christmas, Damodar. Shine Joseph is here. Hello, hello. People from Hello visiting me here. Thank you. Vera Beatrice from Uruguay. Oppo is here. Let me see the back of the book. Why? I'll show you the back of the book. What's nice about it is that um, they have di he has discussion questions. So we, d my student and I, we did discuss some of these questions. Um, it's by Andrew Clements. Andrew Clements, Things Not Seen. Um, very interesting concept of, of a boy who wakes up one day and he's 
invisible. What would you do if you woke up one day and you were invisible? If you think about it, what would it mean? How would it change your life? Who would you tell? And a very interesting questions. Who's the author? Andrew Clements. Andrew Clements. Um, so let me just give that things not seen by Andrew Clements. Um, with another student, um, we've read excerpts from Michelle Obama's biography. Michelle Obama has a biography. Every, all these people have biographies. Michelle Obama's biography um, is called Becoming. Um, I think it's very easy to read in terms, it flows, it's very, it has a conversational tone and I find it interesting. So I've read um, quite a bit from that with one student and also in the past, another young adult novel that we read um, more than a year ago, The Giver, um, very interesting concept. It was a movie, but the book is better. Can't remember the author. <laughs> hey, Ryad, how are you? Oh, Anne is taking your citizenship test. I um, am not a specialist. I, I don't know. I actually, a long time ago, if you remember, Natasha, my student um, from the beginner playlist, was preparing for citizenship, and she did become a citizen. Um, so I, I briefly helped her uh, as a friend, but I, it's not something that um, I'm well-versed in, but uh, in terms of testing someone, I... I that's something I could prepare <laughs> for. If you booked a private lesson, I would um, prepare myself so that I could put myself in a position to help you. But as I said, um, private lessons are used for a variety of reasons. Um, some people use it for ongoing practice. Some people use it for editing. Um, some people use it just for conversation. Um, I've helped people um, prepare for various tests. So I do general English and um, English for professional purposes, but if you let me know what test you're preparing for, then I gain some familiarity with it, um, understand what the challenges are, and we design a lesson that um, meets those needs. I had one person um, la last year, yes, um, prepare for the test as an interpreter. So that was very interesting, and I'm very happy to say that she passed. I'm very proud of her for meeting that challenge. <laughs> The Invisible Man on TV, I don't remember that. <laughs> what don't you like about America? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, there are things I love and things that I don't like so much. I think um, the extremes, that's what I haven't liked about 2020. Um, in most things, I consider myself to be a moderate, and I don't Often, I often don't like extremes, being pulled one way or the other. I'm not comfortable that way. So um, it's hard in our society when we have people on the extremes, whether it's politics or otherwise. Um, I'm more comfortable with people finding middle ground and getting along. Um, so it, it's hard. It's wonderful to have variety um, and diversity, but I like when people are able to find middle ground and, and talk to together in a peaceful way. Um, so sometimes the extremes of this country um, can be really stressful. <laughs> but I do like Christmas time, even those, um, whether it's a religious celebration or not, it, it's a beautiful season. It's the season of giving. Um, this is the season where people make donations and help and show kindness. So it brings out the best in us. So um, the holiday season is, is a nice season because even in this difficult time, um, we want to spread holiday cheer and we generally have um, a, a good attitude and a good mood and we want to share um, th that with others. So I think it's, it's nice. If you don't see your neighbors often, well then maybe you'll see them more or we share holiday cards, holiday wishes. So again, I think the holiday season tends to bring out the best in us and that's a nice thing. Okay. <laughs> it would be nice. Well, Sergio, I hope in January you'll check out the Patreon perks that I'm offering. I will do regular live streams. Um, I want to extend learning beyond my weekly videos, and the best way I can do that is um, through a membership program. Um, I would like to do it so that we can support each other mutually. For me to offer more, um, I need to have the membership program so that um, I, you can support my, my work. Um, if, if I don't have that kind of support, guys, I'm not going to be able to continue this. Um, it's been a long journey here on YouTube over 10 years. I think it's actually 13. Um, it's not always easy, but I really um, rely on just, uh, you know, 
the support um, that I have from you telling others about my channel and um, helping others discover what I'm able to offer. So if I have more members, I'm able to offer more. So I'm able to grow my offerings and um, I hope that more of you will consider uh, joining the membership program through Patreon in January so that I can offer this kind of instruction on a regular basis. Um, live streams are geared to your questions and your requests. I prepare tasks. My traditional live streams um, usually have tasks and I have more interaction going on. I prepare the tasks and I allow time for members to complete those tasks through the live chat. I offer corrections. We do things like dictations where we fill in missing words and then we use the dictation for pronunciation practice. Um, so there's a lot we can do through live streams. If it's a Zoom live stream, I can invite students on, turn on cameras and mics depending on the numbers. Even if it's one student at a time, you could actually speak with me. Um, um, and ask your questions live that way. So there are a lot of exciting possibilities through these exclusive live sessions, again, through the Patreon membership program. So please check it out. Watch out for announcements, okay? Yes, I'll be offering at least two live streams a month through the Patreon program, okay? Which countries do you want to visit? Oh, so many of your countries. You know, so many of them. Um, I often get invitations to go to India. I'd love to. I'd love to go during Diwali. Oh, right. So many festivals. Um, I'd love to visit China one day. Top At the top of my dream and wish list is Australia. I just think it's such an exciting place to visit. I'd love to see Australia and New Zealand. Looks so beautiful. Um, There's so many lovely countries to visit. Um, I haven't been to South America. I need to make it down there. Um, I've had friends, um, as you know, students also from Brazil. It would be exciting to see the places that I've heard of, Sao Paulo, for example. <laughs> So, in the future, no, well, right now, no, none of us are doing much traveling, right? So we need to stay safe. But in the future, perhaps we'll be able to travel a bit more, okay? Um, I see a lot of holiday greetings still coming in. And Sidu, Vero, Leila, thank you. <laughs> Flavia, hello to you. Like your stickers. <laughs> okay, Oppo, Merry Christmas to you. To everyone, Rangana and Subramania, Subramania Sharma, hello to you, Natalia. Oh, I have been to Ukraine. I'd love to go back one day. Um, actually, my first trip to Ukraine was when it was still part of the Soviet Union, um, but then I went back later. I've been to the Ukraine. Um, wonderful people, warm people in Ukraine. <laughs> Thu, Pont, um, Thu Fung, Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> A oh, which language? Stunning Lad is saying the Indian students can help us teach their language. You need to add an S to that. Languages. How many languages are spoken in India? A lot. <laughs> Hopefully if I ever make it to India, I will find kind people to help me navigate and um, you know, find my way if I don't speak the local languages. <laughs> In any case, we're going to wind down now, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this live stream. Go back and listen to the poem once more. Again, you can do a listen-repeat, or you could even turn off um, the, the volume, <laughs> and you don't have to listen to my voice and just um, go through the words and try to read through, keeping pace as I go from slide to slide. There's a lot that you can do with the recording. Um, so have fun with it and enjoy. Um, for those celebrating Christmas, I do wish you a very Merry Christmas. For those celebrating other December holidays, a happy holiday season to you and to all your loved ones. To everyone, I wish you wonderful health. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. I wish all of us, all of us, good health in 2021. We know that um, there's still a long road for us to travel um, and, and getting back to a normal state, a normal way of life, um, but ho hopefully we will all get there sooner rather than later. And I hope um, New Year's Eve will fill you with optimism. That's usually how I feel on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. It's a new start, a fresh start, and I hope um, 
will find good health and unexpected joys in 2021. It'll be a year of healing and um, rediscovering what we need to be grateful for. So happy holidays to you all. And new, and let's we'll see. I, I don't quite know what I'm doing on New Year's Eve yet. So if I don't see you all, I wish you a very happy New Year. I will do my best to share something new on New Year's Eve. It is a Thursday and that is my day to post. So I will share something. I just haven't decided yet what it will be. Okay. Thank you very much, guys, for joining me. And um, have a wonderful day, a wonderful evening. Take care and happy studies. Hey, and download the Emojium app if you haven't tried it out yet. You can at least use one of my stickers. Okay. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>